Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our knock control we're going to be working with in our PC link software. So when we're using a knock sensor and we're feeding the signal into our link, we're going to be able to monitor what the knock is doing. Now we have to know a whole bunch of specific things. We have to know the frequency that the knock sensor should operate at on a particular engine. We're going to have to set our filtration levels up. We're going to have to decide if we're going to be applying the ignition retard when a knock event happens globally across all the cylinders or to a bank of cylinders or to the individual cylinders. There's going to be a whole lot of programming that we have to do on our end to make sure the feature is going to work right. But when it does, it's going to be an amazing feature that we can utilize to tune our spark timing or save our engine in case we get bad gas or we get into a situation where the engine is going to have pre-ignition or knock occurring. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check this out. All right, so let's get started here. We're going to be talking about working with our knock control and our link software. We're going to be finding this is an invaluable software feature that we absolutely want to integrate with our tuning process. It's also going to be used as a safety protection feature once we step away from the laptop and we're running our car in racing conditions. It can save the engine if it sees knock and it can do that on all the cylinders or individual cylinders depending on how we configure things. So the first thing we're going to do to get started here of working with our knock control is create a custom page. So I'm going to go here up at the top, right click, new page, and we're going to be calling this knock control and then click OK. Now we're going to jump into UC settings here. And we're going to go down into our knock control. And we're going to be finding we have our knock setup. So let's double click this and our window pops up here. So let's actually scoot this window all the way up at the top. We want to make as much room as possible here in this window. We have a lot of things to fit in. This is um, a relatively complex setup. It's not uh, super, super complicated, but there's a lot of things that we need to know and kind of keep, keep an eye on here. So the next thing we're going to do here in knock mode Let's go ahead and just turn it to the on status. Now we can see we have two choices here. We see on knock internal or on DI knock interface. So if we have a link G4 plus box that has a built-in knock sensor, we're going to be finding that we can just simply click this and wire the knock sensor directly into our link. Now you should see on your pinout chart that you have the designated pins that are going to be associated with the knock signal inputs. So you would wire your knock signal in to one of those pins, and we would choose this choice here. Um, it should be noted if you're running the Bosch Motorsports or the Bosch knock sensor, it's a flat response sensor. It's mostly what I recommend that you run and mostly what I use on all the projects I do with Link. We're going to be finding that sensor is relatively inexpensive, but it is a two-wire design. You're going to be finding some OEM sensors that are knock sensors on engines that you might work with are one-wire. The one-wire knock sensors are a resonant knock sensor, they're going to be uh, tuned specifically for that engine. Now the Bosch is a flat response, it's much better at working on all kinds of engines. Now the two wires that we're going to be having to wire in, one of the wires will be a signal that's going to come back into the link at the designated signal for the knock sensor on the pinout. The other is going to go to a signal ground. This is really important that you don't go to a chassis ground with it, it's not going to allow that knock sensor to read. So we have to make sure that we pick a sensor ground on the pinout chart and then we pick the knock signal and we're going to be wiring both wires from that Bosch knock sensor into the link. So this other choice here, if we have the knock block, let's say from link, or if we have a Plex knock sensor device, we're going to be finding that it can output a 0-5 uh, volt or um, we're going to be 